Uh, mami, then we have the way that we cry for now for 2016. We think we stand with the independent. Tell you now one thing, Cameroon government not defied you now. If they be defied you now, if they be even followed the steps that we want them, they will not wipe all our sins. What is the call of concern because of the failure for the Ambazonia government? It be a failure to the leaders because they never know where to be war. We never even know how to protect an area that can be safe to your people. The reason why you as a parent, especially those above the age of 40, you are angry because they closed your factory. Is that true? I'm sure it is. You are angry because you feel marginalized. You are angry because you want equal opportunity in Cameroon. You are angry because you wanted complete control over your resources in the English zone. That is why you are angry. You're angry because you felt like you came into a union as two equal partners, but you have not been treated fairly. You are angry because you feel like Aijo did not stick to the promise. All of these grievances today, I want to let you know they are valid. You know the history and yet we are the one fighting. You will have much passion, courage, enthusiasm and conviction to fight because you know better. We were not there in 1961. We don't have all the facts. I wish we were present to make different decisions. I wish we were present when all of these changes were happening so that we would have participated to bring about a transformation. Now that we find ourselves in 2024, isn't it wise that young people be given the chance to face the world, face Cameroon, and address the circumstances and the situation based on how they see it? and not through the lens of 1961. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another interesting video. Uh, this video is directed towards the parents of Cameroon. Dear parents, dear fathers and mothers of this great nation, if you have been watching my video for some time now, I'm sure you have questions. Who is this young man? What does he stand for? Is he for us or against us? You've probably asked a lot of questions. Today, I want to speak from my heart to every parent in Cameroon, especially those above the age of 40. We believe that we can achieve everything that we desire in Cameroon without bloodshed. It is the dream and wish of every parent that their child becomes successful, that their children become better than them. It is my wish that my children be better than I am. 
it is not a parent's wish that they bury their child. And if you have been watching me for some time now, my heart bleeds because we are watching young people die before their time. Parents are alive and their children are out in the bushes. They are picking up guns and they are fighting and they are dying. This should call for concern. Even if your biological child has not been affected yet in this crisis. Every child that goes down should affect you. And that is why I make these videos. The reason why you as a parent, especially those above the age of 40, you are angry because they closed your factory. Is that true? I'm sure it is. You are angry because you feel marginalized. You are angry because you want equal opportunity in Cameroon. You are angry because you wanted complete control over your resources in the English zone. That is why you are angry. You are angry because you felt like you came into a union as two equal partners, but you have not been treated fairly. By now, you wished that an Anglophone would have led that country as a president. You are angry because you feel like Aijo did not stick to the promise. All of these grievances today, I want to let you know they are valid. This is why you are angry. For those who think I do not understand the history, I want to take this time to outline these grievances to let you all know that I understand. I understand what we are going through. But my question to every parent, what is the way forward? How long is this going to last? We have been fighting for more than seven years, yet we have not succeeded to secure one region. There are some key individuals that I'll bring into this conversation. Your children, their experiences in this struggle and have us go through it together. At the end of the day, I want the best for the Anglophones. I want the best for every son and daughter of that nation. I want the best for every parent. I want that even those who picked up guns against this nation be restored back into that nation. I want a nation where there is equal opportunities for both English-speaking Cameroonians and French-speaking Cameroonians. I want a nation where you are given opportunities because you're competent and not because of the language that you do speak. But in order for us to achieve this, I want to say, if we keep going towards one direction and yet we are not seeing any progress, is it wise that everybody within the Anglophone zone is thinking towards one direction and yet we are making no advances? 
if we are doing that then we failed parents then you failed that you raised children that all of them think the same act the same and there is no transformation and that is why I see things a little bit different that I can look at the same problem and arrive at a different conclusion and it is okay and that is what it means that at least we have young people that go out there see what is happening around the world be able to think formulate their thoughts and come up with a different approach how will it look like if you had children and all of them are thinking to one direction. Your strategy is what you believed in. The, there is a phrase in the Bible that says, if the blind lead the blind, they will all fall in a ditch. They'll fall in a pit. And if you have not understood me up to now, dear parents, I wanted to take this opportunity to bring clarity to what i'm doing here i'm for all of us i'm for cameroon i'm for a better cameroon i'm for the cameroon dream i'm for peace i am for unity i am for diversity i'm for progress i am for hope i am It is a tough position that I find myself in. But I, I believe with utmost certainty that this vision of uniting this nation, igniting hope, is the way forward. Some of you have said that we are young and so we do not know. And then I ask the question, you that know better, why don't you set these young people aside and go fight because you know better? Because How will you feel if your parents put up stories about their past, their ex, and put guns in your hands and tell you to go fight? This is a situation most young people find themselves in. They have been told stories where they were not present. And they have been motivated to act as though they were present when these occurrences took place. We want a way forward. There is a lot of opportunities in this dispensation for young people to be dying, whereas they could use this technology globalization transformation all these blessings that we have at our disposal today and carve for themselves a compelling future in that nation so with that being said 
I would like to bring some individuals into this conversation. And most of them are young people with diverse experiences through this struggle so that we can make sense of it from the perspective of a parent looking at their children and the outcome of their lives. They carry them go for some far place on school picking them. I shall I still get that video for you. I will find the video. And when they kidnap that picking them, they pretend for say and Bazunya soldier they kidnap them. I will make a report. Say I give them twenty four hours. And say they want to see what I feel do. I think that was on two thousand and nineteen. I give them twenty four hours for release that picking them. They release them immediately. According to my interview and my investigation, it should say no one of them will be touched. All this thing, the call of concern because of the failure for the Ambazonian government. It be a failure to the leaders because they never know where to be war. We never even know how to protect an area that can be safe to your people that you claim you love i just watch uh, one thing yes so as we proceed this man from my understanding has worked for both camps he has served as an amber general and he has served for the ddr camp assisting the government to rehabilitate the young people in the bush he is in london as we speak his perspective on everything does matter when i listen to him speak I see someone that is not biased, but a youth that found himself in this situation and would have lost his life. But for some reason, God preserved him. And he's asking the question, how can you as a leader of the Ambazonia movement. You guys have been fighting for more than seven years and you have not been able to secure a territory or secure space for your people. And you want to keep fighting. Is your strategy working? That is a very important question to answer. Human life is very precious. They are very great young people that have lost their lives. We don't know who they would have become. As a parent, as you sit down and look at this situation and look at this event, how do you feel in your heart? If you had a child that you love so much your son or your daughter that you love so much their head is chopped up they are being killed and displayed in the market square how will you fail i want us to reflect parents i have children and i try as much as i can my place i try as much as i can to put myself in the position of the parents of these people let's keep listening somewhere now i don't watch one thing somewhere now see how many bikes Today now I'm under the 15th of April 2021. 
We be born. No, la Republic man, no, they when I get all this by them. Now, still, now, brother, them. Now, hungry, they push people for all sides. Because our leader don't fear. They don't fear. They don't want for toxic. They don't fear. They don't want green. I remember when they give the mantle for Sako, he said, in the space of one one year, two years, if you don't take me for Boya, he will step down. You know why we take we for Kumba? You know why we move we from uh, uh, Ganjo to Kake? On Ganjo to Ekumbi? You know why we move we from Bonge? No, we talk about Ekono Titi You know why we move we from Ekona to Munya? So you get one base for D. We did for Munya steady. So don't take over Munya. But you still did the talk, so you the rule we. By today, the government will be separated by 15 different groups. 15 different groups and i'm thrilled about this video because there's a lot that you will learn most of the things that i've been saying here that there is no way you will succeed in any movement if you are not united if you are power hungry parents this is what some leaders within your struggle has let the anglophones into and they don't seem to be giving up on their plans and their strategies my question to you is are you going to sit down and keep watching the young people die Whatever that justification is, whatever that pain is that you feel in your heart about the 1961, about the history of the Anglophones in that nation, are you going to sit down and keep encouraging that someday you will gain victory and let the young people keep dying? That is the question I have for you. If there is another way that will help us, do you think that is even possible? Because that is why we exist. If there is no way for us to ever change any circumstance or situation, there was no need for any one of us to be born. The reason why we were born is because God trusted us with the capacity to change situations, change circumstances, create a better Cameroon. That is why we are here. If you think the way Cameroon is, is written on stone and nothing will ever change, and everybody in Cameroon will live like this forever. Why are we here? We are alive to change circumstances. 15 different groups. But some of them are look at the clown. When they take a clown, they take a joke. For no concern on anything. This comes for a concern. Because when a baby talks like this, so may they ask SDO for Kumba about what did it happen? For the picking the way they die for Kumba. Nobody will see a concern. Because he know. Because I don't see why they go catch people. Whether they talk the truth about what it happen. They just define way for go get the head man. When they arrest this guy. They say me be privately so that if you go get Bombasa. So that Bombasa go talk. The, the, the government official will be give that order for the IWP. And as so it don't ever they happen that they ever play the first one over our head. So that will not understand. Picking the dive school for Ikondo Titi. From the school we begin and day to play with minute today. For minute for drive go for that place is not up to 20 minutes. Vigilante the day. But they say Ambazonia fighters they kill that school picking them. They still wait for them for about 50 something minutes. No military, no attack the until they go before military come. Why? And that is why I love this video. Because hearing from both angles, people like this don't speak with bias. He outlines 
the shortcomings of the military as well. And through this video, you will understand because I made a video a couple of months ago and I said, great people make a great nation. It is the responsibility of everyone in authority to do the right thing to make Cameroon great. If the president delegates responsibility to an authority in charge within that jurisdiction and that authority figure doesn't carry out the task that has been assigned to them, you cannot completely blame that to the president. We should understand that the responsibility of making a nation great lies on the shoulders of every citizen within that nation. America is great today not just because of the president. America is great because of the responsibility that every citizen that has played a vital role to making this nation great took upon themselves that mantle. And this is the kind of Cameroon we are creating. Because many people will think they have paid me is because we do not have that sense of nationalism, patriotism. Some of you are scared to speak to dead. Some of you are scared to, to voice your opinions. There are some things you only say in a bar or when you're on phone with someone, you cannot have the courage to say these things in public. And I just want to let you know, this is time for us to stand up and speak. This is time for you to voice out what you really think about that nation. What you think about the future of that nation. What you think about this whole idea of war and what it has cost us. It is time to speak up. Before now, we've never had this number of people die in Cameroon. Never. And this is something that should call for concern. To everyone that was born in that nation. Why are you here? Why are you in this war? If you cannot stand up for something. If you can't stand up for what you believe, why are you here? You're scared? You're scared? Why are you here? If you cannot speak your mind and, and express yourself and be able to address the issues that are plaguing your community, why are you here? Parents, it's high time. The same way you raised us, it's high time to stand up for what you believe. Call your children to order. Speak to them. Tell them this way we are going, this way you have been going won't help. Because there are some children as well that want to keep going this way. They want to keep going this way. Because they believe that this is the only way. Or some of them have found a way to take this as a source of livelihood. And I want to guarantee you this will take you nowhere. There is more to your life. You're better than this. There is hope. There is a better future for every Cameroonian. You were not created to just come here, experiment with guns and die like a chicken and be displayed in the market square. There is more to your life. Take this from me. Parents, our children need to be hearing this. You need to tell them this. You need to encourage the young people and let them know you guys need to do better than us. We saw all of these problems happening. We did not take action to address them. Today, see what we have put you, the youth, in. Pivot. There is something more for you in this world as a young person. Take your destiny into your hands. Parents, these are the words. Speak life into your children. I love us so much. I believe that there is more to us. If we would take a different path. War is costly. War is pain. War frustrates. 
Look at how we've mistrusted each other. We don't trust each other anymore. The level at which we don't trust each other has escalated at an alarming rate. Look at the kidnapping for ransoms. Look at the IDPs around the world. Look at those who are on exile that might never come back to Cameroon. That is why I'm standing up. With a plan to even restore those who are on exile. With a plan to make sure that there's a place in Cameroon for the IDPs. To make sure that young people rise up and start businesses, engage in entrepreneurship, and become productive citizens of society. That is why I'm standing up. In America, here where I live, 90% of the jobs are created by the private sector. There is a right way to start business. And there is a wrong way to start a business. And that is why many people fail in business. Just the structuring of your business alone can determine your success or failure. So when people go about saying that the government shut down businesses, I agree. There might be some bias. The referee might not be fair. But when I ask many people who started businesses and fail, I begin to realize a lot of the shortcomings on their path before even getting to the part of the government. There are businesses that have been shut down here, even in America, by the government. Why are we tormenting our people like this? Why? What is our reason of killing our beloved one, frustrating them? Alex, you are still there. Moscow and the rest. I just I don't I don't mention almost all now. Asia, all now when I see carry gun, I said time don't reach. If we want surrender, it will be good. It will be better. If we not surrender, we will take that gun out of your hands by force. Put me anywhere. We not go waste them in the army. My tell you now once in Cameroon government not defied we If they be defied we if they be even followed. The steps that we want them, they don't wipe all our sins. And Do you hear that? And this is something that I observed <laughs> because I've studied, because I understand how war operates. I understand how situations or circumstances like the one we are dealing with are being handled if it was war. This is a young man on ground. This is my first time coming across this video. But if you've been on this channel, you remember that there was a time I said, I understand military strategies that have been deployed during war. And from my observation, yes, many people have died, but the Cameroon government is not at war because if they had deployed military strategies, you will understand that we are at war. So when others are deceiving you that they have something going on, that they will help you win, that they will do something amazing and you are going to get independence, they are selling you a lie. This is a young man on the ground. He has worked for the government and he has worked for the AMBA. And he said if the military had done what they were expecting, all of the Amber fighters would have been dead. And they are the ones taking up the mantle to address the situation on the ground. I want to be educative as much as I can. Because I want our people to be informed. Because ignorance is one of the biggest problems and challenges we are facing. And I've understood most of these things without even being on the ground. Without even coming across these videos. And I've said those things on this channel. So, 
I want you to keep watching. But one thing I guarantee you is if care is not taken, we will lose big time. Since we don't discover, I said government not to fight Amber. We don't decide now for fight. We now we self. We go fight. We now we now be prepared any minute. Now rainy season this way don't come. It care we now go sleep again for bush because day where you come out for that bush can't say me you me you put your head for house for one second. I mean just one second. Now that night where fire will go fall for your head. If I talk to so you, take them lightly. Then when it go to happen, we go so so the post for you. And I go stand on top of that die body that like I be do for all of my own so I go record videos. I go talk so I don't advise now when I know here. Now when I this at the end. Man. When I about 12 or 11, now if you can block the whole Libya lamp. Time don't reach where we we'll go for do thorough cleaning. Thorough cleaning. We we'll go for finish a few remaining ones. Then. If I talk so you like for surrender, you surrender. Not even call me, say you want to surrender yourself. Why you must call me again? Time don't pass, I'll be the one who call me. One call, when I get, when I other friends away, they did I'll call them. Call them, they go help you, you'll go, you'll go to the center. Go, who comes up, you see some. These are your children, parents. These are your children. Look at their lives. Look at their conditions. Hear the words that are coming out of their mouth. See what they are doing to each other. Doesn't this grieves you? In spite of whatever the situation might have looked like, whatever you feel like they have taken from you, is this what you wish for your children? Honestly. Go for brigade law. Who come up? Go for Joe Office law. Go for Joe's Office of Menji. Go for church, go meet up father. You know, must call on me again. If you know one do when I go calm down, I repeat, fire would go fall for your head. Fire would go fall for your head. So if you like them, you come out. If you don't like them, you remain. That is none of my businesses. But when I go come, remember, after we fire would go fall for your head, they go appreciate we with money again. We go chop. Even a very day bush day, we no money, they don't put them for una for when I hate them. They will not run come on today. Because when I believe say, as not there for Butch, uh, it means anything for Bertus. It means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Before the end of 2024, I go for return the stay back inside Libya Lem. And I not get for the come Libya Lem where one eye amber is still there. And they are sure when I say by December 2024, December 31st, 2024, no one of Una go still be alive unless say Una surrender. I repeat, unless say una surrender, then by December 2024, none of Unano will still be alive. I be tell Oliver, so people say, ah, na propaganda, na propaganda. Eske una don't hear noise again. Oliver Le Kelka be the highest person who don't make propaganda then. For inside the whole Southwest and Northwest. After Oliver, you begin no pity. Who say them day? Who had them day? Which of them still be alive? Which of them? And for Una day, Okada people them. And motor drivers and we una di run Changfontem Road. As I be say una be faced with some situation where he worry. Yes, I una be faced because it be difficult say person will come off a bush. Say move your battery, give me or give me money. You deny. As I be that one, I di come for talk this one live again today. If you go down, I'm about take twenty five for you, twenty five francs for you. Make sure say you call complain. Make sure say you report them. Because if you not report them, who go believe say you be one of those aiding their activities. You be one of the people they aid you help them. If they take motor battery for you for use and shoot explosive, make sure say you report immediately as you return back. If you not report them, forget. We will go send you dry kunkum as well. We will consider you like one of them. In the past, we don't the in the past we don't the uh, compromise with some of una, but this time around we know the compromise again. 
No, not to no go be like, say, one sorry, you more do this. It no go happen again. We never grew up seeing this. Never heard of this. Maybe this happened in another country. We read about it, watched it on the news. We never grew up hearing young people speak like this. This is what has led us to. This is what we are seeing right now. Doesn't this grief you? As a parent, look at the percentage of old folks in Cameroon. And look at the youths. Where are they going to? What is their future? Parents think. When a parent buries a child, the grief is not their wish. And Mark waits when me battles at the top. No, not no good day again. So once as you fall, you don't fall. And make it not happen. You pick phone for call me. But I know the talk say, as I say, some of these military people too, where they therefore wrote, they don't use palaver, this amber stuff for exploit una. For exploit una. As I be this one very well. Some of them don't try for exploit una. Una be up. Get work. School days una for help you for that kind of situation. If you discover, say, any of the military people they try for exploit una because amber, because of amber, complain as well. Complain to the competent authorities them. When I get the military leaders them, when I know them. And, and this is where you keep your bias on the side and face the reality. You think if this young man was working for the government only, will he say they are corrupt police officers that you should report them to the right authorities? Think for yourself. And this is what I had said. The government is bad, not just because of the president. I'm not saying the authorities in the country, they're perfect. But I want to say, if the individuals in that nation that have been appointed to serve in their various jurisdiction are not doing their job, the nation will struggle. And he's outlining even corrupt police officers. Keep listening. Watch this video to the end, please. Because it will help you gain clarity. Have a balanced perspective. No confirmation bias. Be neutral and just think out of your group. For instance, we we'll get uh, for a law. I think we'll get a lieutenant. We if not be, if you go complain for that lieutenant, for down for uh, the other Cameroon army, if you complain for their commandant and their commandant a person, you need know, to take shit. You tell you say so so and so military person, they don't do so for me. You know, you know, go take them lightly. You go follow them right up to the end. Yes, or you complain even for the administrative authorities. Say so, that thing is where they do and with proofs, with proofs. Say so, that they exploit, they exploit me. That they do this. As I be this one as well. And I'm not going to see how we don't shit them. When our riders and drivers, they can't catch a dude. Hello. So just to stretch on that a little bit. They are good leaders in Cameroon. If they were bad all together, we we'll not have that nation. And if you don't know how to find your way to the right leader, you will stay in your little bubble, complain, create your own narrative, carry these assumptions, and think that everyone in the nation is bad. Try to make friends with those who mean well for that nation. Because I know with all my heart, there are good police officers in that country. I know with all my heart, there are good ministers in that country. 
I know with all my heart that there are some individuals in authority in that country that are good. If all of them are bad, then all of us are bad. Not you trying to advocate for change is good. Everybody is bad. So we should all perish. Because if you think you are righteous, then there can be one righteous minister. If you think you are righteous, there should be one righteous police officer. If you think you're righteous, there should be some people in authority in that nation that are good. You cannot claim to be Jesus. There are some good people in that country. And that is why you're confused about me. Because you see me, you think everyone should be on that direction that you are on. I don't encourage everyone to be on the same direction. That is a terrible system. That is what it means. Democracy. That people are free to think critically and express their perspective based on how they see the world. Based on their experiences. Based on their studies. Based on their education. Based on how they have been able to analyze the same situation you have seen and arrive at a different conclusion. When we have a conversation, that is how we are able to carve a compelling future because of this diverse perspective. Wouldn't it be amazing that we have a problem and you have a team and every member of that team sees that problem from a different angle with the solution you'll be able to get somewhere because of the diverse perspective on that particular problem if everyone is thinking in one direction there's a problem with that if everyone is saying the same thing there's a problem with that if everyone is acting the same way, there's a problem with that kind of a society. I'm not saying people just be in the opposition. But no, you are on the side and you're bringing a diverse and unique perspective into the same situation. Not just to be contrary, but not dogmatic as well. But not conventional in your approach. Uh, my name is Nahagwe Joel, uh, uh, member of the DDR Committee Commission. We will be joined for the year 2020. Um, today, my brothers and my sisters, and fellow uh, Anglophones, and we when I don't see me for media, what I don't talk, I don't do video. I don't need to do sensitization against the Amazonia regulation. My purpose to come today is to so come apologize to my brothers, my sisters for the Amazonia revolution, for the for the atrocities and way the La Republic government they don't use me for, 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 for against my own people. And why are they come today? So because. The situation where I don't find myself inside today, I don't be ever believe say I go feed people they go feed day with me, and then they they, they they force me for those things, and then even up to then they will still promise me say I will leave. But today I find myself say they feed me then two and four for feeding. The same people then where they say they will promise me they will do me this one, they will do me that. But the DDR commission today I don't find myself for prison, so I decide myself to do this video. Way at the doing today, and one for inside the video, I the one talk for my brothers and for the citizens the way that they plan for say they want to join for the struggle for help for restore their country back, where they don't be misled for tell and so for, for give them the apology for the misled who don't misled them for tell and say DDR this where they call and DDR. No, to know the DDR way it benefit you now. DDR, the open DDR, for the fact we say the one that we say, Muna scatter with you on a brombilam, Muna live for mami, then Muna part away, they cry for Muna for 2016, with the Muna stand give the independence. Because of the politics, they use DDR now as the political point for scatter. Me, I become more go for DDR, I go, I no say the way they talk, say they will give you work, they will give you. Uh, freedom, money, and everything. But when I reached a DDR, I discovered the DDR is another form of distraction. Beautiful. I just love what he said. Parents, 
this is a young man that has not been given the opportunity to live his life. He has been deprived of making decisions based on his thinking. He has been acting based on a group. In the beginning, he said he was promised that through the Ambazonia independence, he will achieve all the things that he just outlined. He went to the DDR camp. He was promised the same things that the Ambazonia promised him. And we don't know, right? Because when you look at a situation like this, you might be prone to say, oh, maybe the DDR is a bad idea. I don't know. But one thing that I do know is, this is a young man that has been deprived. Look at your son, parents. This could be your own child. His life is what it is today. He's, he's in prison right now. We don't know the factors that led him where he is right now. I wish we had all the facts. Because you had been on the other camp killing or fighting. Now you went to the other camp. We don't know your conduct, behavior, and many other factors that contributed to where you find yourself today. But this is a painful situation. And what we are seeing here is a life of a young man probably with a promising future that has been misled and he has not been given the opportunity to think for himself. He has been conditioned with some historical events and every decision that he has made in his life leading to where he finds himself today is based on those stories that were shared to him, the promises that were made to him, and he has been following that track to where he finds himself today. This could be your son. A couple of months ago, the Amber was the problem. Now he's in prison. The DDR is the problem. Are you guys following? You might take this story to support your idea of Amber or you might take the story on the other camp when he was with the DDR to support another agenda. But one thing I do understand is that this is a young person. That his life has been messed up because of a historical event. I'm for the people of Cameroon. The young people. The old people with a good heart that want to see their own children become something. Those are the people that I stand for. Those are the people that I'm speaking to today. What is the future of these people? When you pick up a phone and you're talking with a friend and this conversation or this story about cessation comes up or this story about Cameroon comes up, what are you saying to each other? Are you thinking, trying to pour light, change your perspective, or you remain steadfast on what you've always known? When you get on a WhatsApp group or you are in a meeting or you get to meet a friend for a drink and this conversation comes up, what is your input? Are you trying to pivot to another direction or see this problem from a different angle, understand that there might be a different way that we can be free without violence, without young people losing their lives, ending up in prison, young girls in the streets of Douala prostituting for 500 francs a day, young people with no jobs, Young girls that have been pregnant for Amba soldiers who are dead and gone and they have three children that they have to look up to. I'm asking all of us these questions. This is our nation. What is the future of these people?
What is the future of these young people? How do you, parents, see this nation unfolding based on the circumstances that we are watching today? This is the challenge I put before us. Everybody would love to go to one direction, right? Everybody will, let's just keep going that direction. I wish the direction that all of us are going towards was producing light, life, opportunities for young people. Hope for the young people. If that one direction was producing all of these beautiful things that enhance the quality of lives of the young people, it would have been a good idea. But now that is producing death, hopelessness, children that will be raised without a father, young girls that have turned into prostitutes, young men with no jobs parading the streets of Douala, Bamenda, Boya, Yawonde, others that have run and they're living in foreign nations and they are struggling and some of them are calling me on a consistent base and they are trying to understand their own life. Does this bother you? It should bother you. I want all of us to be on the same page. Not for death. Not for this pain. Not to justify war. Not saying that because every other nation has fought war to gain freedom, it should be the norm. War should not be justified. As people evolve, we look back at these barbaric practices and we say, it, war is not a good thing. We have to disturb me. And they don't make me, but I bet, but I say, did they, are, they don't make me. Blame, blame. They make you, they turn you, they confuse you, they did this to you. And this is what I want us to reframe from so that we can take some responsibility for our own lives, our actions, our choices. So that tomorrow you say, I went in there. I made the decision to go in there. I made the decisions to say the things that I said. I made the decision as that is why I'm where I am today. You should be able to take responsibility. That is the new breed of young people we are raising in Cameroon. That they will not just fold their arms and say everything happened to them and they had no control. No, you have the liberty, the freedom to choose. And parents, this is what you should encourage your children. That you have the duty and responsibility to choose. To choose the words that come out of your mouth, to choose your actions, to choose your decisions, to choose how you want your life to turn out in this world. You came here all by yourself and you will go all by yourself. Understanding that helps you to have complete control over your destiny. Because when you start any movement with blame, this is exactly the words that will be coming out of your mouth when you are in this condition. You'll be looking for the next person to blame. That is, will be the cycle of your life. I can tell your end if your words always blames someone else if the words that are coming out of your mouth is always somebody that caused your situation and this is prevalent with every leader within this movement that we have seen and we can change this we can move towards a brighter future towards a more compelling path we can choose hope we can choose ingenuity we can choose entrepreneurship we can choose to be proactive, to contribute, to grow, to progress, to love, to forgive, to hope, to be good, to be smart, to study hard. Understanding that hard work alone is not the recipe for success, but being smart. Understanding how money works. Understanding how business works. 
understanding why others fail in business and others succeed. All of these are contributing factors to your own growth, progress, and life. Most of we will go for the day and run make we key in hotel fight at them. They don't make we point civil and the way they didn't have a guard for radar. Mostly civil and the way they did give information them to our brother the way they did that bush day. They don't catch them. But the one they want to be part of, but the one they want to be part of today. But I know say now nah, wait till that we don't have them because some of the activities and they don't use me today. This is another young person that was killed as well it is a painful situation there's another young person that was killed these are your children parents these are your children this is our nation this is the future generation If you see all of this and it doesn't bother you, then I thank you for choosing the path that you've chosen. I hope it sits well with you. But if you believe that we can do better, then join me. Join me and even ask a question like, what is the plan? Let's try another way. Let's choose a different path. Another video that I wanted us to the oceans listen to, uh, it's regarding a situation in Nigeria that I came across uh, when I was doing my MBA program. I wrote a paper on corporate social responsibility and I was doing the research. I wanted to write something about Cameroon. Uh, I didn't find enough data. So I found this particular story that I'm sharing with you happened in Nigeria. And I want you to listen to this and then I'll make my final remarks connecting this to the Anglophone crisis. And that will be it for the day. Take a listen. Was buried the family matriarch. Rosalind was 87 years old when she died, but they claim her death was hastened by her exposure to oil pollution. You make her to fall sick, and you take her to clinic. You do this before she dies. We are spending money on her health because of the water. Mercy is covered in skin rashes. She says it's from ingesting and bathing in contaminated water. Royal Dutch Shell has been producing oil in Ogoni land since 1958. The Ogale community is now suing it for environmental damages. Emene Godwin Okpabi is a man leading the charge against the oil giant. He says his community feels betrayed by Shell. I am devastated that, that up to now, Shell, Royal Dutch Shell, is trying to see how they can hide away from this. What Royal Dorshell did in Ogale, they killed our people, they are still killing our people. So those who are making profit, or those who have made profit out of this, need to know that it is blood money. Okay. 110 million. So one thing that I just want to outline in that story, uh, to wrap up this session, this is a state in Nigeria, right? Shell has been extracting oil. That is, they have a contract with the government of Nigeria. And they have been extracting oil from the specific uh, state or the specific region for a very long time. Now, because they didn't clean up the spill, you see, so the water in that community has been contaminated. And most of the people within that community in Nigeria have died as a result of the negligence of shell this is corporate social responsibility in finance or in business it's important that wherever you are 
extracting minerals, you take care of that community. At least the spill, whatever that you are producing, you make sure that you keep that environment clean because some people live in that environment. The reason why I bring up this story, because it was a fascinating uh, story I came across while I was in school, is if this had happened in the Anglophone zone, we would have perceived this to be something that is politically motivated. And the reason why this happened to us is because we are Anglophones. We, we wouldn't have seen this as something that maybe the government made a mistake. And so the community is facing some challenges. And so the company extracting oil is to be blamed. The people within that community blame Shell. Us Anglophones would have blamed the Francophones or would blame the government. And, and this is just my problem, right? I wish we could address the problems that we are facing as we see it. Not, not, not blaming the Francophones or blaming the government entirely. This Nigerian man is blaming Shell. The stranger in their midst conducting his business and not taking responsibility for their waste and its consequence in that community. This is an, the right attitude. This is a, a big case. I encourage you to look up this case. This shell case in Nigeria because they've paid a lot of money to the people in that community because of the spill. This is how we should look at the situation. The Nigerians would have been blaming the government alone. But they are blaming Shell. Perspective. Imagine if we came together and we blame the strangers or the people that come into our midst to create confusion or deprive us of our resources and the opportunities within our community and not blaming one another because of the language that we speak or not looking at resources as something that maybe uh, specific regions should exploit all of those resources and the rest of the nation, I mean, they just wait and then you're going to report to them what you've done with what you have ex ex exploited. But we look at the resources within our nation as something that belongs to everybody and how can we distribute that? And even if the government has privatized the company, and that company is not doing the right thing within that community. How can we hold that company accountable? And not just the government. That is a better approach. If this was in the Anglophone zone and this negligence occurred, we would not just blame that private company we will blame the government more than we even blame that private company. The people within that community are sowing shell to pay for the damages they've caused in that community. Are you guys understanding? This is how we look at global trends. What is happening in other communities, other countries, other nations, and how people are handling situations like that so that we can make sense of our own situation. There are minorities in every country. And there is a way you can conduct yourself, behave yourself. You can be right, but the way you say it, the way you behave, does matter more than you just being right. So parents... I thought I'd make this video showing you our young people and what has become of their lives so that we can think well about the future of the young people, especially the young Anglophones in that country. This should be a food for thought. Think about it. God bless you. God bless our nation. God bless your family. I'm 
praying that we turn around and take a different path that no one dies on that path but people work hard try their best become contributing citizens of society and be able to make sense of their reality until next time remain blessed all right if you like this video you're gonna like this other episode and you can watch it by clicking right here